Top Billing, billing. Uptown Murph. Top Billing, Billing. Yo, Jets Nation, you have to hit your boy Jersey Murph out on this one. I saw where the Jets had a top 30 with my man Joy and Travis from FSU. I think Jordan Travis will be a very solid pickup in the draft, someone who you can redshirt this year. Uh, he could hopefully have a season after that under his belt with an Aaron Rodgers. And a Tyrod Taylor, a consummate professional in his own right. Uh, definitely an upgrade uh, from Zach Wilson last year as well there, so keep that in mind there. As a third QB, kind of a learning block kind of guy, uh, you could do much worse than a Jordan Travis. But man... If they were to pick up my guy, Joe Milton, Joe Milton, big Joe Milton with the biggest arm that you'll see, biggest arm in college football, perhaps have the biggest arm in all of the NFL the minute his name is called on draft night. Oh, man, that would be worth his weight in platinum. I'm telling you this right now. That's the kind of guy you want to have as a developmental guy. Uh, somebody who brings something unique to the table, somebody with a ceiling that is just higher than everyone else's uh, because of his skill set or because of the talent or what you believe you can get up out of the dude. It reminds me very much of a joy and love. Now, we see what joy and love has become, at least from this first year with him being as a starter, taking over for Aaron Rodgers, uh, being able to sit and learn through osmosis with Aaron Rodgers for a couple of years or a few years or however long that was for Jordan Rodgers. Or I'm sorry, Jordan Rodgers. For, isn't that his brother, right? No, nah, for Jordan Love was worth, man, it is worth anything they could have given up because it looks like they have a franchise quarterback for the next however many years right after Aaron Rodgers. The Jets could do the same damn thing with Joe Milton. And man, come on, man. One of the reasons why I mentioned Jordan Love is because I remember not being very high on him when he came out of college. Obviously, he played at Utah State against some terrible competition. And not to mention, his last year was super suspect. Um, you see here, he had three years in college. So 689, I'm sorry, 1,125 attempts in those three years, which is pretty damn good. But if you see right here, he went from eight touchdowns, six interceptions as a freshman or maybe a redshirt freshman or whatever to 32 and six his sophomore season. But then he went for 20 and 17 and ended the draft playing at wherever, playing in the Mountain West Conference. So I was like, what? You know what I mean? Uh, dissecting him before that draft, I was like, man, this guy needs to go to some place where he can sit there and be able to learn from somebody and be able to use that skill set that was undeniable. Big on guy, uh, fairly athletic, uh, can be accurate uh, when necessary if his footwork is good and all that there. As you can see right here, he has a 61.9% completion percentage as well. So comparing that to Joe Milton, so he is 6'5", 244, so a little bit bigger. And look at this. The attempts aren't there like that. Only 650 attempts. So he was in college six years and still only had 650 attempts. And you have people who are being definitive about what he can be in the future. I hate shit like that, right? I absolutely despise it. Not to mention, right, he didn't start out that well, right? He had to, he left Michigan, wasn't very good at Michigan at all. Um, in the little time that he did get, if you count up the attempts, right, he barely had 150 attempts over those three seasons. But, man, he gets to Tennessee while it's not perfect. He still goes for 32 touchdowns and just five interceptions um, in that time period. When only one year as a starter. So he was 20 and five. Definitely has a high upside, 64.7% completion percentage still. Take that for what it's worth, but check this skill set out. First things first, what's going to cause most teams to take a flyer on Joe Milton is his undoubtable arm strength. I mean, Howard may be putting it lightly. The guy can simply go vert with the best of them he doesn't need any type of foot mechanics anything to get that thing down the field no doubt about that uh we see right here he's barely able to step into this and look where it goes and with the velocity and accuracy on this as well we'll look at it right here on the pool boom play action fake holds the safety look at him searching sifting and then right there you see it. he could not step into that thing at all and it still travels down the field with some straight up velocity.
Come on, man. This guy is a complete arm freak. I don't think it gets much prettier than this right here. Look at this. Game set match. Jakob. The only place where that could be for the defensive back not to really get it there. All right, some inside fade here. Looks like they matched up on the linebacker, so he's beating pretty bad with that Dr. Fauci separation. But still, the product placement on this one right here is nasty. Continues to hold that safety there, but look at the ease of motion. Oh, my God. Picture perfect. What a throw, man. And all that is dope. But I'd rather talk about functional throws. Throws that will be in 90 something percent of the playbook. We see right here on this out route, you can damn near qualify this as an opposite hash throw, even though his foot is not on the hash because of how far it goes to the outside of the numbers. Now these type of throws, if you don't have accuracy and arm strength, I'm here to tell you they will be picked off going back the other direction. Ask me how I know, because I've done it on the other side of the ball. But we see right here with perfect mechanics stepping into the throw, uh, you see him working this outside the numbers and it is absolutely perfect. Right there on the line, zipped out, roped out. Let's go. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Joe Milton needs some refinement in his game. But if you've labbed the tape on this man, if you watched him as much as I've watched him over the years, uh, you know that he's shown flashes of being able to do just that. The ability to not panic and stare down the barrel of the gun. We see Lawson here on the blitz. Joe with a fadeaway jumper, taking something off of it, putting a silence on the gun and feathering the clutch. The rhythm and timing element definitely is something Joe Milton has to work on, but the tools are all there. It's just about him bringing his feet with every throw. On this one, gets a nice gather, and he's able to right, get that point and shoot foot there, come to balance, deliver, shoot. Look at it, but the ball humming. He'll also show little subtleties in his game, right, chaining through his progression, subtly sliding in the pocket in the face of adversity here go back on that you can see three technique getting vertical on him steps out steps up delivers with his eyes downfield that's exactly how you do it and how you would want from your young qb and although he just turned 24 years old uh, Jordan Love didn't get his first chance to start until he was 25 years old so keep that in mind Fake pitch turns into a back to the basket play action fake, keeps his eyes downfield, strikes and Jacobs. Milton's a pretty good athlete, but throwing on the run can be a bit of a conundrum for him. He needs to consistently learn how to square his shoulders to the target just like he did on this particular play. It's just gonna be more about reps, if anything. From an athletic standpoint, there's a lot he brings to the table. You get that lead QB counter here. He's able to get to the third level. And when he detaches just on his regular dropbacks, he will search up a defensive back and bang, just like he did Malachi Moore right there, fertilize him, send his soul to Jesus to the upper room. That boy is physical, 6'5", 240. Uh, get him on those leads, just get him to the second level, and bang, he will punish some defensive backs, even some linebackers. He's a big kid, man, but... Uh, definitely able to get him out on the perimeter as well. But further development is needed to where you can speed that clock up in his head to where he's not just holding the ball like he does right here on plays that should be out really quick. Or like I said before, if he's getting out, he has to get that lower body mechanics to match the upper body mechanics. I would take Joe Milton somewhere in the fourth round or later. The Jets happen to have a fourth round pick that is the 134th pick, which is their second pick in the fourth round. I'm not so sure I wouldn't take him with that 111th pick in the fourth round just to cement that I would be able to get him because you would have had multiple picks before then. And the Jets, my man Joe Douglas did such a great job in free agency and roster management there that you're not really picking anyone to start on this particular team. To me, all the starting roles are cemented. You may have some people who can be in a heavy reserve role, but for the most part, I can't really just see somebody having to start. Now, if somebody does end up starting as a rookie, 
Uh, that would be because they're just super talented like that. But if they didn't start, uh, you would know why. Because the Jets are stacked, man. So people going to have to realize, baby, the Jets are on a mission, a mission to advance all the way to that Super Bowl. So let me know what you think about your man, Joe Milton, the arm freak of freaks. Uh, if he will be a good pickup for a developmental quarterback later on. All right, big shout outs to Jets Nation. Uh, big shout-outs to all my people out here in Jersey. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend that Top Billing is where it's at. You want to get that real, all right? Salute. Top Billing. billing. Of Town Murph. Top Billing, Billing. Top billing. Top.